Hi, my name is Margaret. In this video, I want to introduce you to fields, getters, and setters. Fields are special kinds of variables. You can categorize variables in local variables, parameters, and fields. Fields correspond to attributes in the UML class diagram and they can be further divided into instance fields and static fields. Notice how static fields are grayed out. I want you to know that they exist, but in this video we focus on instance fields. Instance fields store the data, the state of objects. Those are the instances of a given type. Each instance of the type has its own copy. Let's look at the difference between local variables and fields. Local variables are declared inside a method or a constructor, while fields are declared outside of a method but inside a class. Local variables are used to store information or state temporarily. The moment the code block where my local variable was declared terminates, my local variable goes out of scope and is no longer available. Fields are used to represent attributes of a type and the availability is independent of method calls or code blocks and their termination. So you can call methods multiple times, they can terminate multiple times. This does not affect the availability of your fields. Local variables have no default value. If you declare a local variable and you do not initialize it, your local variable is undefined. Fields do have a default value. It is zero for all primitive types that represent numbers, as well as for character. It is false for Boolean, and it is null for all reference types. And last but not least, local variables can be used only within the method or constructor where they have been declared. Please notice the word only. Local variables definitely cannot be used anywhere outside the method or constructor where they have been declared, but their scope might even be further restricted if they are declared within a code block. Fields can be used anywhere in the class, so we have no restriction to any special code segment here. A short look at the parameters. Para parameters are used to pass information to a method or a constructor. This is information the method or constructor will use to provide the desired functionality. Let's have a look at access modifiers. Java has a number of access modifiers. At this point, I want to look at public and private. So here is my public access modifier. This is the most permissive access modifier. It allows me to access the public member from other classes. Different from a private access modifier, which is the most restrictive one, it allows access only within the own class where the private member was declared. If you have a public field, anyone can access this data and any value can be assigned to your field. Now this doesn't sound like the best of all good ideas. If you have a private field, we talk about data hiding and we have this most restricted situation that allows us to protect our data. This makes it much easier to guarantee our data integrity. 
Now, of course, the question is, if the fields are declared private, how can they be accessed from outside the class? There are two access methods that are very widely used, getters and setters. Getters are used for reading. They allow other classes to access the value of a field. Setters are used for writing. They allow other classes to modify the value of a field. So let's have a closer look at getters. Getters expose the value of the private field. They are also known as accessors, just a different word. Getters, get method, accessor. It is very common to choose a name for a getter that is using the prefix get and the field name that it exposes. Now we're going to change the first letter of the field name to an uppercase letter to have our camera case notation like get field name. Notice that the return type of my getter and the variable type of my field need to match. Also notice an empty parameter list. No additional information is needed for a getter to return the field because the field is already accessible within the class. And here you can see, very important, the field has to be returned. This is the purpose of the getter, to expose the field, to allow other classes to read the value of the field. Let's look at an example. Here I have a field private int length and a corresponding getter public int get length. Notice the name prefix get plus my field name with uppercase L. Notice how my return type int, my field type int correlate and I'm returning the field. So my field is length, I'm returning length. No parameter. Now here is a second example. Private string first name is the field. Here we have a public string get first name as a getter. It exposes the field. It allows other classes to read the value of first name. Once again, the return type and the field type match. I'm returning the field. Here is my field declaration. Here is my field returned. There is no parameter. Now let's have a look at setters. Setters assign a new value to a private field. They allow other classes to modify, to change a field value. Setters are also called mutators because they mutate, they change, they update the value of the field. We have this naming convention to use a prefix set and then the field name with the uppercase first letter for camel case notation. Setters have a parameter. Setters need to provide the new value. The setter has the job to assign a new value to the field. So here you can see the new value. The type needs to match the type of the field. And then inside my setter, this parameter is used to modify the field. So my field is on the left hand side of my assignment operator because the field is going to be modified. The new value is provided in my parameter. setters don't return anything. They just assign a value and this is it. So here is an example. I have a private string first name. This is my variable. And I have a setter that allows me to change the first name with a new name. So here is my new name. This is the new value that is going to be assigned to the field first name. Also notice the parameter type needs to match the field type. And 
here I have void so my setter is not returning any value. Why should I use getters and setters? The reason is we need to protect the data integrity and we can do that by preventing unauthorized access and by keeping inappropriate values from getting assigned to our fields. One way to do that is by restricting the access, providing a read-only access. You can do this by providing a getter but no setter. So anyone can look up the value but it cannot be changed from outside the class. Another possibility is to provide input validation. So you might provide a setter but you might prevent invalid values from being assigned to your field. Let's assume you have a class circle, your field is a radius, and somebody tries to provide a value minus three. Now, it doesn't make sense to have a negative radius, and inside your setter, you can provide a logic to handle this kind of a situation. You can throw an exception, you can use a default value, for your radius if a negative value is provided, etc. So you can do whatever it takes to prevent an inappropriate value to be assigned to your field. Now here a short consideration which access modifier should be used. If you declare fields, use private. Now notice this little star, I'm going back to that in a moment. This allows us to remain in control over how the data can be accessed and manipulated. And then use public getters and setters to expose the private fields. And so at the very end I want to go back to this star. I want to point out this is an oversimplification, but it is a good starting point to keep your fields private and your getters and setters public. Now it is your turn. Write a getter and a setter based on the following field below. So the field is private string title. I want you to write a getter and a setter for this field. Pause the video. When you're ready, press continue. So here is a solution. You can see here the private field and the corresponding getter. Notice the name of my getter. It's called get title. So we have the prefix get, no parameter, because there's no additional information necessary to return a field value. My return type has to match the type of my field, and I'm returning the field directly. So here is my field, I'm returning my field. Now here is my setter, notice the name, set title, the prefix set, doesn't return anything, return type void, but it does have one parameter. The pr parameter provides the new value for my field, I just call it new title, and I'm using this newly provided value to assign it to my field. The field has to be on the left hand side of my assignment operator and the parameter type has to match the field type. Here is a second challenge. Write a getter and a setter for the following field, private char initial. Pause the video, when you're ready press continue. So here is a solution. Notice the field, initial, it's of a type character. The getter has the name get initial, so we have the prefix get. The return type of my getter matches the type of my field and I'm returning directly the field. So here return initial, initial was my field. Also my getter has an empty parameter list. Quick look at my setter. 
The name is set initial. I'm using the prefix set. Doesn't return anything. Return type is void. But I do have a parameter. The type of my parameter matches the type of my field. I call it new initial because this is the new value I'm going to assign to my field. So here on the right hand side of my assignment you see the parameter passed. On the left hand side of the assignment you see the field that is receiving a new value. 